Now, John Piper preached on this, and he gave me a good illustration that I will now politely steal from him. So, uh, here, here's what John Piper said. He said, in, in our world, a lot of us have knowledge about the Bible the way Theophilus had knowledge before these letters were given to him. He had some teaching. He had some head knowledge. We're not sure how deep this was, but he did not have what? He didn't have certainty. Do you see? He had some knowledge, but he did not have certainty. That's why Luke wrote these to him, to give him certainty. And, and John Piper said, for many Christians today, our knowledge of doctrine and Scripture is more like clouds than like mountains. Here's the, here's the idea. So, yeah, we, we read a little article or we've read a little bit of the Bible, and so we kind of have this idea, okay, I think the Bible kind of says this or that. We kind of have these clouds, these big ideas in our head. And what can blow a cloud away? One good gust of wind, and the cloud is replaced by something else. So, in our culture today, you see Christians on all kinds of issues Hearing teaching from the secular worldview that opposes the clear teaching of the Bible. I mean, just, I know I mention these a lot, but gender and sexuality is frankly deeply confused and harmful and wrong in so many ways in our culture. And the Bible's teaching is so healthy and right and pure and true. And yet, so many Christians are waffling between what Scripture says and what the culture is saying so loudly, and we're saying, I've had some teaching, I have some knowledge, but I'm not sure, I'm not certain. And we waffle, and one gust of secular wind could blow one thought out of our mind and replace it with something unbiblical. Do you remember in Ephesians, Paul describes spiritual immaturity as being blown about by the wind and carried about by every wave of doctrine, by human cunning and craftiness and deceitful schemings? Th think about that. What you think about God and Scripture matters more than anything else in the world. We treat doctrine as a joke. We, we make jokes about doctrine. Oh, come on, you know, don't get on to your doctrine. What we believe about God in the Bible is essential to living the Christian life. You and I cannot faithfully live a life of holiness for Jesus and missionary activity that will be enduring and faithful if we don't have solid teaching and belief and certainty about the person of Jesus and the doctrines of the church and who Christ is and who God is. We must have solid teaching and certainty on these essential things. Now, I admit to you, not every doctrinal dispute is of the same weight and significance, certainly. But we must be thinking Christians who weigh carefully. So Piper said, we want our doctrinal beliefs held with humility. Of course, held with humility. But we want our beliefs about God and Jesus to be like immovable mountains, not like fluffy clouds. We, we want to have it down in our bones who Christ is. What I mean, just take marriage and sexuality, what those are. From the Garden of Eden moving onward, what is it? Marriage is supposed to reflect Christ and the church. Gender and sexuality, what are these things for? What is that about? And have it to where we say it with love and passion and tears, but with conviction, because we believe the truth of God's Word with certainty. People will think certainty equals arrogance. And I'm telling you, that's not true. Being, being sure of who God is is not arrogance. Being sure Jesus is reigning at the right hand of the Father is humility to believe, not arrogance. Now, G.K. Chesterton is a man I disagree with on all kinds of things. He was a lot, a lot of stuff. But sometimes he said some brilliant quotes. And G.K. Chesterton said, I think it was G.K. Chesterton, he said, we have today, modern man has placed humility on the wrong organ. We were meant to place humility on the organ of ambition, you know, advancing my name. We we're supposed to put humility on that. And instead, we've lifted humility off of ambition and we've placed it on truth. We actually think arrogance is being sure you know what's true about God, and we think that humility is pursuing your ambitions in your heart. Think about that. We have reversed the definitions. Humility is saying, whatever my heart is longing for, like Jerry just talked to us about, what my heart longs for may be deceptive and evil and wrong. I shouldn't believe and follow my inward desires, although everybody today tells you that the hero in every story is the one who, against tra traditional convention or their parents' belief, follows and is true to themselves, no matter what the cost. That's the hero today. When biblically, that is actually a form of arrogance. I'm believing my heart against God's Word. 
That's arrogance. Humility instead should be, no matter what my heart is telling me at this moment, no matter what my passions are after, I need to submit them to the truth of what God has said. That's humility. To say, Jesus rose from the dead, and He will forgive anyone who trusts Him, and to be sure of it is humility. It is not arrogance. Sure, we can probably say those things in an arrogant way, but to be convinced and to be certain is a goal of Christianity, not a vice. Do you follow that? It's a goal to, to, to achieve this certainty. So we don't want clouds. We want humble, joy-bringing, immovable mountains of doctrinal truth from God's Word. And, and Luke's going to give us some reasons to trust what he's saying. 